Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. It's February 17th, just 16 days to go until New Jersey's Back Bay Striper Fishery opens again for 2022. I'm Jim Hutchinson with a New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. I'm here in Edison this week, as promised from last week. Uh, we're just finishing up the setup for the Jersey Boat Sale and Expo. The New Jersey Boat Sale and Expo, it's running this Thursday through Sunday, February 17th to the 20th. It's gonna be an outstanding event. And of course, we've put together a terrific lineup of seminars once again for this year's event. Well, they're wonderful except maybe Thursday at 2 p.m. But trust me, it gets better after that. In fact, right after I'm done on Thursday, you can pepper the wind rep with all kinds of questions about this New York bite stuff. Uh, and if you're looking at a trolling motor, uh, definitely Friday afternoon for trolling motor installation specifics. On Friday, again, trolling motors, lobstering, how to throw a cast net, very important with all of our changes in the striped bass fishery in the last couple of years. Saturday, there are five seminars, trolling motor tactics, the tactics with using a trolling motor, doormat fluke, advanced trolling for striped bass, bluefin tuna, and then fishing for jumbo tog. That one should be a circus. We've got the bunker box, rare and bay extravaganza to kick off things on Sunday, followed by NJ Fishing Club, doormat fluke, and a very special guest, recently retired Jim Donofrio from the RFA is gonna join us here Sunday after Afternoon to talk a little bit about fisheries regulations and such. Uh, again, the, the Recreational Fisherman, uh, uh, the, the, the Fisherman Magazine, and the Recreational Fishing Alliance partnering for these sponsors uh, for these seminars this week. And you get all the details over there at jerseyboatexpo.com. And of course, this isn't the only big show this President's Day weekend. In fact, on Thursday after my seminar, I'm racing up to Oaks, PA for the Philadelphia Fishing Show. And that too, of course, has a giant lineup of seminars presented for that three day a week, uh, three day event. Three days, um, three rooms. I think we've got 45 fishing seminars scheduled uh, for there at Oaks, PA. We kick off Friday at 1230 with inshore and mid-range tuna, kayak fishing, Catfish, walleye, largemouth, uh, smallmouth, Jersey record, jumbo tog. That's all on Friday. Saturday is going to be crazy busy in the seminar rooms. Everything from American Shad to White Marlin. The Cape Atlantic Striper seminar there that afternoon. I'm going to try to sneak in the back, see if I can't pick up some things. Unless they catch the king of the spot burn, throw me out of there. Some recognizable names and topics on Sunday as well, from Albies by Run and Gun to Wahoo on the speed high speed troll. Uh, should be a killer weekend, and you can get details on that by visiting phillyfishingshow.com. I hope to see you at one or both of these events. It's going to be a terrific weekend, and it is so good to get back into the boat and outdoor show season. Make sure you pick up a copy of the February edition of the Fisherman Magazine, because the shelf life is running out. We're getting ready to go to print on Monday with the March edition, so we're bringing all those surplus February editions out to the shows this weekend. Um, but again, we go to print on March 21st, just in time to gear up for all that tremendous striped bass action that again is just a couple of weeks, a little over a week away. At this point, white perch has been the tug uh, that has kept most of the striped bass fishermen active in the back. I know they're not really stripers, they're small, but they're, they're the relative of striped bass, and they are pretty scrappy on light tackle, and they taste good as well. Uh, as far as getting into some of that white perch, I spoke to Dennis at Hookhouse Bait and Tackle earlier this week. He said the nighttime bite has been about the best for guys soaking bloodworms. Think seven, eight o'clock at night. Um, I, I guess a cup of joe or a bottle of dew will keep you going there if you're working those uh, late hours after a long day at the office. Farther south, David Absecan Bay Sportsman, uh, he says he's been keeping bloodworms in stock hot and heavy for the perch guys, which of course is something he's gonna continue to do all the way through March uh, when bloodworms become such a hot commodity as of March 1st for those striped bass. Um, but the question of course, are there white perch biting in the state of New Jersey? Are they biting well south of Tuckerton? I would say yes. Somewhere they're nibbling a bit. Somewhere there's a couple of uh, salt of the earth pineys I know working their tails off at the cleaning station. That's a nice catch boys. Blackfish of course is still in play here in the Garden State as well as in Delaware, uh, though there are not many boats sailing at this point. Uh, there are some cod, pollock, uh, jumbo porgies and ling in the mix, especially boats heading out of Manasquan and Shark River still at this point. 
Um, but again, just as striped bass and winter flounder will reopen in just 12 days, 16 days, what is it, 12 days at this point? Uh, that's the point where blackfish will go on hiatus for a month. So a lot of the boats are going to continue to sail or reopen their sailing schedule in April. So if you don't see your favorite fishing boat sailing in March, consider that an idea for April. Filling in the gaps, of course, here in the Garden State and beyond has been ice fishing, especially in the western, northwestern part of the state. Now we had good ice conditions early last week. Then we had that warming trend Friday and Saturday, so things got a little bit slushy. Uh, but a first couple of cold days to start this particular week may bode well on on some of the hard water. I do know it's a little bit milder now as we're heading into the weekend, so that could be difficult. You might want to find some open water. Give the uh, trout a, uh, a try, as a matter of fact. But why don't we check in with the ice conditions in the Poconos and North Jersey with my friend, my man, George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, the weather here is getting a little bit wonky. We're in that period of, you know, freeze and thaw, freeze and thaw. But I'll tell you what, we still got a couple weeks of ice fishing left, I think, the way things are going. You know, right out here in Beltsville, we got some open water. But back in these uh, cove areas and the shallow areas, we still got a bit of ice. So it may hold on for a little bit. Now, with that said, the temperatures in the next 10 days that I'm looking at is going to be in the, in the 40s or 50s during the daytime highs, but down kind of cold at night. So we may hold on to this ice just a little bit longer. And speaking of the ice, we are getting some people out catching some fish on the hard water. Uh, good friend Jay Batch is way up north here and he's checking out some of these lakes and ponds and getting some uh, trout on them as well. So lots of trout action still there. Uh, but good friend Eric Goodstall finding some open water. Yeah, these creeks and streams are still open. Might as well go get some trout. He's out getting some of those browns, some of those brookies and getting some good action on there as well. And finally, right here at Beltsville, back in the shallow areas, we have young Ryan Lawrence again out getting some panfish some perch and just some good action during the day it's a great way to spend uh, the afternoon here on the lake now next week uh, door, uh, sat, Friday Saturday and Sunday Jim and I will be at the Philly fishing show I hope you go and stop by and see us there now if when you're done the show you guys have to stop by uh, the Delaware River Shad Fishermen's Association is putting on a show uh, it's the sportsman's hunting and fishing flea market and that'll be Sunday February 20th 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. And that's the Alpha Fire Company uh, Banquet Hall in, in Alpha, New Jersey. Now, if you want more information on that, you can call Rusty Held at 484-239-4723. So great, great weekend, guys. If you want to get out and do a little fishing, buy a little gear, and get ready for the season, you know, spring is only a little over a month away, so we can get out and get on them. From Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. Hey, speaking of ice fishing, did you see this? The mayor of Hudson, Ohio resigned this week after suggesting that ice fishing there in the Cleveland area could possibly lead to prostitution. Sounds like somebody got striper and stripper mixed up again. From Cincinnati, Ohio, my brother Clark and his Bengals gave it a good showing on Sunday, but came up just a bit short in the 2022 Super Bowl. I'd say what Super Bowl number that is, but LVI, I didn't take Latin, what do I know? Good showing, bro. Finally, folks asking about the status of the 2022 summer flounder regulations and sea bass in the Garden State. Well, I would expect we're gonna find out more on March 3rd when the New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council meets. That's typically when we start talking about those regulations. So stay tuned on that one. I don't know if it's gonna be an in-person meeting or a webinar. You can find out all the details though by just putting New Jersey Marine Fisheries Council in Google, hit search, you will get to it. Also, keep an eye out for the ASMFC public documents that are available at asmfc.org. At some point in March, we're gonna be holding some hearings either virtual or in person to discuss the rebuilding of striped bass. That public comment period is open now. It's gonna continue until April 15th. But something to clue you in on, uh, I guess a lot of the uh, exclusive catch and release striper guys have been talking about perhaps a moratorium, a moratorium on harvest. Well, guess what? One of the things that's in this ASMFC document are time and area closures. However, the consideration in this document is time and area closures would be something to address the release mortality on striped bass. Keep in mind, 9% of every striped bass, 9% uh, of the striped bass released will die. 
So the time and area closures they're talking about are not harvest moratoriums, they're no targeting moratoriums, meaning shutting down the striper fishery for two to three weeks at a clip, shutting it down similar to what we have in the back bay uh, here in New Jersey, no targeting. Folks, there's a reason why it's closed in January and February. And it's because they want these fish to not be hassled. So I know a lot of folks continue to target striped bass in the back bays of New Jersey in January and February, don't do it. When they close this fishery down, according to the ASMFC document, no targeting, no catching, no releasing. Now, for you folks on your secret Facebook pages, uh, calling everybody else Karen for res respecting the no target closure in the state of New Jersey, this one is for you. The confidential operation game thief hotline number to call to report a poacher or a fishing violation, 855-OGT-TIPS. That's 855-648-8477. You can also call Marine Enforcement at 609-748-2050. Call me Karen if you want, but I'm paying attention to the law. How about you? Bait holder style inla inline circle hooks, they're law too. Last year we talked about it because when we started the striper fishery in March, we didn't have the bait holder inline circle hooks to hold our clams and bloodworms in place. Well, they're out there now. Eagle Claw Laser Sharp has the bait holder style circle hooks. They've also got the pre-rigged regulation approved uh, hooks out there as well. Look for them in a local tackle shop near you. We're just two weeks well, in two weeks, two weeks from this moment, I expect to be talking about the very first striped bass, the very first slot keepers caught in the Garden State as of March 1st. Odds are they're somewhere, probably up here along the Raritan, maybe the Toms, the Mullica, Maurice, uh, or the Morris, or, or the Great Egg Harbor River. I couldn't tell you specifics because as they say, loose lips sink ships. Tell you one thing, the ships in this room, I think there's about 170 boats in here. They don't sink. It's the New Jersey Boat Sale and Expo. It's going on in Edison all weekend long. It's presented by the Marine Trades Association of New Jersey. Who, pray tell, is that? Well, for more on that, I want to introduce you to my friend, Melissa Danko. She's the executive director of the Marine Trades Association, and she's going to tell you all about it. We are a nonprofit trade organization comprised of hundreds of recreational marine businesses located all over the state. We are dedicated to advancing, promoting, and protecting the boating industry and the waterways and the boating public as a whole. Uh, we are thrilled to be back here at the New Jersey Convention and Expo Center in Edison. Uh, we have close to 170 boats, uh, Boaters Marketplace, and we are looking forward to a great opportunity to bring everybody together to showcase all that is great in boating. Yes, we also produce the Jersey Shore Boat Sale and Expo, which is held every September at the Jersey Shore Blue Claws in Lakewood, New Jersey. That's an outdoor boat show event, again featuring the top dealers from all over the state of New Jersey, uh, showcasing all that is great in boating. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious anglers choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.